Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about recursive least squares with stats models. Let's get started. So first off, recursive least squares is um, an expanding window version of ordinary least squares. Now, in addition to um, availability of regression coefficients computed recursively, uh, the recursively computated residuals and uh, construction of statistics to investigate our uh, parameter instability. That's what we're going to be using it for. Now, um, a couple things that we're going to be using with this, we're going to be able to plot some statistics uh, along with reference lines. Uh, we're also going to be able to kind of uh, give a full-fledged uh, example. Now, this first one we're going to be uh, doing with the copper data set. Uh, we'll be doing probably a couple of these um, throughout the, this next week. We'll probably also be doing something with like quantity theory of money, as well as uh, maybe some uh, with some formulas and some restrictions and whatnot. So let's go on and get started with uh, some of our basic imports. So first off, let's go on to do import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, import... Um, stats models dot api as sm import matplotlib dot pi plot as plt um, and then uh, let's see what else do we need let's actually just go on and uh, do matplotlib inline as well um, so a couple things that we'll want to do in here is uh, oops there we go. Um, let's go on and load up our data. So we should be able to do something like a print sm.datasets.copper uh, uh, describe or description long. Okay, and so we can kind of see what, what this actual data set is. Uh, so let me see if I can maybe if I zoom out a little bit. There we go. Now it's nice and clear. So just a basic uh, quick description of what the data set we're going to be looking at is. All right, this is uh, the copper world copper market from 1951 to 75. Um, and it's going to, um, we can actually overcome this with a two-stage estimation. And you guys can kind of read this and look at it in your own. I want to kind of go on and get moving with this. So let's go on and do uh, data is equal to sm.datasets.com. Uh, copper dot load pandas dot data uh, data dot head let's take a look at it okay so we have world consumption copper price income index uh, aluminum price inventory index and time um, and here time you can see is just basically kind of linear now we need to actually create up a date range with this so let's go on and do that as well um, so let's do data.index in here is equal to pd.date range. Um, and we want in here 1951 01 01. Uh, we want this to, again, 1975, what, 1975, 1975 01. Oh my, 01 01. Um, and our frequency is going to be a s, um, and then we have our endogenous variables. So I'm going to do endog is equal to our data, and we want in here um, a world consumption. So let's go on and double check what we're going to want here. So. Um, this, what we're having in here is, um, uh, let's see. So we're going to actually go on and do a couple things. We want to construct our model. Okay. Uh, so we'll do our model is equal to sm.recursive ls. We want our endogenous and our exogenous. Um, and I haven't, I have not uh, chosen our uh, exogenous variables. Let me uh, let me do that here as well. So exogenous is going to be here um, sm dot add uh, constant. Okay, because again we we want that um, index um, or index our intercept in there. So this will be data, and we want in here. Um, what do we want? 
let's grab all of these, I believe. Um, let me do add one below, and we'll do something like this to kind of help us out. Data dot columns, and so we want copper price all the way to inventory index. We'll grab those, and those are going to be our exogenous variables. So now we are creating up our model. We want to make sure and go on and create up our fit as well to get our results. Um, and you know what, let's go on and um, do this all in one. There's no real need to, to not res dot summary. Okay, and so now we see here, uh, we can actually see all of our actual uh, variables. Now we are going to want to um, be able to grab a hold of all of our coefficients. So let's go on and do that real quick. We can do this by grabbing the um, results dot recursive coefficient. And then uh, let's do filtered uh, zero. Okay, so then we actually have our nice, um, all of our actual um, recursive uh, uh, coefficients. Now let's also, we can use the, um, we, can, uh, we can actually plot these again. This doesn't, this doesn't really help us a whole lot. Let's actually go on and plot out those estimates and those uh, coefficients. So we can do res.plot recursive coefficient. Um, and then we'll do something like a uh, range. Um, oh, and you know what? We do need that model, don't we? Because we're going to have to grab in our exogenous variable. So let's actually call this model in here. Um, and we'll do something like res is equal to model.fit there. Okay, so because we're actually going to have to grab this model down here when uh, we want to grab in our range. So we do our model.k exog. Uh, and then we'll run our alpha is equal to none. And let's give us a nice big figure size. So fig size is equal to, let's do a 10 by six. Oh, and what, what are we missing here? Oh, whoops. recursive. There we go. So now we actually have our estimates. I don't know why it ran it twice for me, maybe because it was in memory. Let's rerun it again, quick. All right, it's running it twice for me. That's that's no big deal right now. Um, let me see if I had that in. Will that stop it? Yeah, that, that'll stop it. Okay. So what we see here is um, a couple things that we need to look at. So the cumulative statistic um, is going to be available with our cumulative sum. So we can do something like um, res dot cu uh, sum in here. But usually there's it's going to be more convenient for us to actually visualize it. I'm going to just run it here. You can see it. Now what we actually want to do is visualize it. So we can do here um, res dot plot um, uh, come sum. And here we can actually see our our plot in there along with our years. Now, another related statistic to this cumulative sum of squares, okay, is going to be available with our uh, this very similar method, okay, of the cumulative sum, but we also add in squares. So I'm going to just copy this, so we can put it down here, and do a plot cumulative sum uh, squares here and um, in this plot, okay, in this plot here, okay, um, the square statistic is not going to move outside of the 5% confidence bands. Those are our 5% confidence bands here. So you can see the same thing here. 
but whenever we do the squares, we can see that it has this nice type of linear type trend in there. So if we fail to reject the null hypothesis uh, of stable parameters at 5%, and that's, that's at least in this one, we will fail to reject. Um, let's see here, we've, we've been going for about 10 minutes on here, so I'm gonna end this here. If you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.